The Afghan civilian population is going through a complete free fall, uh, an economic collapse unlike what they've seen um, probably in dozens of years. Um, what's happening right now is uh, uh, levels of hunger and famine that we have not seen. Uh, the World Food Program, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Mr. Beasley has said, there's 23 million Afghans marching towards starvation. Uh, it's going to be hell on earth. Uh, this is really a, a, a real tragedy for uh, Afghans. It's a tragedy that the international community um, hasn't been able to act sooner. Uh, just on uh, August uh, 15th, I remember during the fall, I, uh, I had uh, given an interview and I was concerned about 14 million Afghans uh, facing starvation. And now the number is at 23 million Afghans. So just in these, what, a few months, uh, things have gotten so much worse. And all we hear is that this winter, um, we have uh, 3.2 million children that will uh, suffer from hunger. One million children could die this winter if nothing is done sooner. And we know that there are pledges being made by the international community, a little over a billion dollars pledged by the UN. The problem is, is that that's not enough and it's not coming fast enough. Um, given the tremendous challenges uh, faced right now on the ground due to the uh, collapse of the government, the collapse of the security forces, the uh, 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 collapse of, of, of all uh, public uh, workers are, are, are not being paid, so people are not able to go to work. Uh, the Afghan government, uh, uh, de facto government, can not pay the electricity bill um, to Uzbekistan, as you know, so the lights have effectively been turned off as the uh, troop withdrawal has happened. And the aid community has uh, uh, completely uh, been, I think, caught uh, uh, by surprise, uh, as has everyone. Um, but we absolutely need to think about what we can do, uh, given the circumstances. And, you know, uh, humanitarian aid, a billion dollars or so, is 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 really not enough. Um, Afghanistan had a budget of eight and a half billion dollars before. 75% of it was paid by the international community. So if the international community uh, uh, is, is, is helping with this billion, that's good. But um, how will it get there? There's a cash shortage. There's a, a shortage of Afghani cash notes, as well as a shortage of dollars, which is what is causing a, a, a real problem on the Afghanistan end. So in other words, when you transfer money to Afghanistan, and that's assuming you, you do because OFAC now allows you to, there's the general licenses 14 and 15. Many people are, are, are unclear on that. So even those uh, transfers are, are few and far between. But for NGOs, for example, who transfer money to Afghanistan, hoping to pay salaries or buy food or medicine for folks, they're really having a hard time because on the other end, uh, there's this limit of $200 a week. I understand now it has just been up to $400 a week, uh, but that's really not enough for an NGO uh, to be operational. I mean, I know several NGOs who have contacted me uh, begging for help to get money on the ground to people. Their own staff are starving. Forget about the, the, the beneficiaries that we're talking about that they serve. Their staff are starving. I, I know women who are um, uh, uh, in shelters in Afghanistan uh, currently who don't have food or, and don't have heat. Um, so, and, and the NGOs, again, are sitting on, on cash that they can deploy. But the problem is on the other end, because of the shortage of cash, the central bank decree to limit the withdrawals, because what can they do on that side? So we absolutely need to look at solutions to this problem. And there are several. Um, a lot of this is related to uh, political will, I believe, um, at Unfreeze Afghanistan, where a group of um, women activists and civil society leaders who uh, have been working on these, uh, on these issues, particularly our first concern, which we heard from our friends uh, a few very, few months ago, was that they, the teachers were not getting paid. Teachers have not been getting salaries since June. Um, that's pretty much the case across the public sector. It's the same for healthcare workers. Um, and so we've been talking to folks in, um, in Washington and other places to see what can be done for unfreezing their assets. And we know that for healthcare workers, the UNDP has announced that they're going to pay 25000 um, healthcare workers through a novel mechanism that um, avoids going through the Taliban um, uh, out of 70,000 estimated healthcare workers in Afghanistan. So that's a good step, but the money hasn't actually reached the ground yet. And that's a whole other piece of this um, that we can, we can talk about later. The point is the money's not coming fast enough. It's not coming in the levels that we need. There's a cash shortage and there's a liquidity crisis that we absolutely need to address in order to 
address the humanitarian challenge.